Hello and welcome to Jill Cameron Creations. Thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. Today we're going to be creating watercolor backgrounds that are faux marble. This technique is super fun and really simple, but it does take a little bit of time. I had already created a blue panel and set it aside to dry and I wanted to see how it turned out when it dried. With this technique, you do need to let your panels dry on their own and not use a heat tool for it. All of the supplies that I'm using to create these cards will be linked in the description below and over on my blog. My paper is Straithmore watercolor paper, nothing fancy. I'm using Nuvo brushes that I got from scrapbook.com and I'm using my Alta New watercolor palette. You can use whatever you have on hand for this technique. I do recommend using a small round brush and having several different ones so that you don't have to clean them as often and at least one wide brush to put water on your watercolor panel. This is a wet on wet technique. I started with clean clear water and brushed it with a wide brush over the entire surface of my panel. I was learning as I was doing this that I needed to have more water in some places because it soaked through the, pa the paper. To keep the paper from warping, I actually brushed water on both sides of the paper and it would allowed it to lay flat and it kept moisture in my paper. Wetting both sides of the paper also decreases the amount of warp that you get in the panel when it's this saturated. Then I added water to the colors that I was going to use for this particular panel, making sure that I had a spectrum of colors from dark to light, and I just started making dots all over the panel. I added water when I needed to, to get a more, to get more flow of the colors together, to get more bleeding, to get more blooming. And sometimes I just went in with my round brush and dropped droplets of water in places so that I could get that bloom effect. I also made sure that my paint colors were not very watery. I wanted them a little on the creamy side so that I knew that they were going to be really pigmented when I put them on the paper because I wanted them to bleed out and still have that color. These of course were things I learned doing my first panel that I did not record because I was like, I don't know if this is going to work or not. After it dried, it looked like blue marble. It was super, super cool. Once I was pretty happy with how the panel turned out and I didn't want to add any more paint colors to it, I pulled out all of my glimmer sprays and mica powders. This particular one is in teals and I pulled out a teal spray and it didn't really show up a whole lot. So I pulled out a mica powder that had a green undertone to it and this is from Maker Forte and they're called kaleidoscope powders and I took a brush and I literally just dipped the tip of it and tapped it over my panel and you're not going to see it a whole lot in the, the video or even the pictures of this but after it dries this looked like a mermaid tail. So you'll see the card at the end and pictures of it over on my blog. I'm only going to put together one card. I'm more interested in showing you this fun technique to create watercolor backgrounds today. When my panel was finished, I let it set for a few moments just to kind of settle in a little bit before I attempted to move it. I moved it over onto a flat board and then set it on an even surface and allowed it to dry. Here you can see where I'm wetting both sides of my paper and you could tell when I flipped my paper over it had already started to bow in the middle. This kept me from having to tape the panel down to a hard board so that I could get even coverage all, all the way up to the edges of the paper. And like I said before, it significantly reduced the warping after my panel dried. I didn't have to run it through my die cutting machine to flatten it out. The only thing that I had to do, which I do on most of my cards anyway, is I put a large acrylic block on top of it after I glued my panel down to my card base. 
And this video is significantly sped up. It took probably about an hour for me to make all of the panels and I let them dry for about three. And then I went back and made my cards and finished them up. I hope you try this technique and give it a try. I'm gonna play some music so you can see how I created the rest of the panels. I do end up using my spray bottle a little bit more on my panels to get a fine even mist when I needed it and also to initially wet my panel. But I take my brush and go over the panel after I sprayed it just to make sure that I got water everywhere because spray bottles miss spots. So I did a really light mist on some of them and then just took my paintbrush and brushed the water around on it and that seemed to work really really well. You can tell when there's too much water added to the panel because it starts to bloom and run together like it does at the top of this one. However, I still salvaged it and moved that water around on the panel a little bit more and I really enjoyed this technique so much. It was so much fun and it was relaxing. It wasn't overly complicated. Just remember to let your panels dry naturally so that your colors don't run. If you use a heat tool, they probably will because you'll push some of that water around. So I'm just gonna play a little bit of music while I finish up doing these panels and you can check that out and just relax.
I really wanted the backgrounds to be the stars of the show for these particular cards. So I kept everything that I added to them pretty simple. For this one, I'm going to white heat emboss the floral arrangement on the front of the card panel. For the rest of the cards, I either added white heat embossed sentiments with a sub sentiment on it, or I did tone on tone sentiments that just kind of blended in with the background and with a little sub sentiment. I didn't worry about whether the heat embossing was perfect on them because the background kind of looks a little rough anyway, so it fit with the theme of the backgrounds. This is the only panel that I trimmed down and literally just took off the very edge and I used the uh, Tim Holtz paper trimmer that has that deckle edge on it just to add a little decorative piece to this particular panel. I thought it fit really well with the flowers that were on it and literally just bumped the edge of it to be able to cut it and that was it. So I would love to see everybody pull out their watercolors and give this technique a try. It's a lot of fun and I think it's a really good way as well to get over the, the intimidation of using watercolors. And I'm sorry my Lucy Kitty has decided she's going to tear up the chair sitting beside me all of a sudden. Sorry. But it's a great way to get over the intimidation of using watercolors and water together to get any kind of effect that you want. This would give you a really good starting place if you've never used watercolor before. You could also do this technique with uh, re-inkers for your ink pads because they're really saturated color. You could definitely do this with distress inks, or distress oxide inks. Uh, I think those would be really unique patterns as well and use the re-inkers for those. And I might even give those a try. But I did this with my watercolor and that's what I found. See, there's my big heavy block. And if you don't have a big heavy block, you can use the base for your die cutting machine to hold a panel down to make sure it dries flat. So those are my tips and my fun little technique today to create faux marble watercolor backgrounds for your cards. And if you have any questions, drop a comment below or you can message me over on Facebook or you can email me as well at jill at jillcameroncreations.com. Don't forget to hit subscribe. The pictures are at the end of the video and over on my blog. And there's also links at the beginning, at the end of the video to other videos that I have. So thanks so much for joining me today. I appreciate you so, so much. Y'all have a great day and happy card making.